Hello everybody and welcome to Performance on Wheels. After putting nearly 10,000 miles on the 2023 Bronco Wild Track, today we give our first impressions comparing what is a gnarly off-road capable SUV to the king of the crop. We try to understand if there's actually any sense behind the fact that the same named vehicle can again jump up another $30,000 in that MSRP. Let's get into the video. Before we get too far into today's video, I need to give a quick shout out to Apple Valley Ford and Lincoln for giving us the opportunity to use this brand new Ford Bronco Raptor, which they currently have for sale for $101,470. So if you guys are looking for or interested in a new Ford Bronco Raptor, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. If you guys are not familiar with our journey at the Ford Bronco, mid last year, my dad here purchased a two door big bend it was. it was. And then from there, he went to the Bronco driving school and he began to realize and appreciate the capabilities of the Bronco. True story. Right after they got back from that, they went home with this, the Ford Bronco Wild Trek. Before, when you owned that big bend, you were like, I don't know how you could ever spend more money and options on a Bronco. You're and then exactly you came right. home with this. You didn't know how you could spend $20,000 more on the same vehicle. Now we're doing it again, but we're looking at it with the Raptor. The Raptor is the cream of the crop and surprisingly performance wise, it's actually only one step up from the Wild Trek with a huge price difference gap in that step. So let's go over all of the differences, drive the two of them and see if that engine, the transmission, the suspension, all of that stuff, the interior, right. make a it, lot of stuff to there, there is a lot of stuff to unpack. And we'll just, we'll, we'll glaze the surface. And I do want to bring up one point that Austin brought up that lower trim Bronco, a big bend or a lower trim Bronco compared to the wild track. There's a pretty awesome video that we have on the channel on that topic. So make sure you click that, check that out. If this isn't relevant for you, but you just want to see what a gnarly Bronco is really all about, let's keep going. Now, I know you wanted to start this off, but I, I got to say, just as we're looking at this thing, <laughs> this like off orange, off red color with the amber running lights, how lifted and wide this thing is, whoa. So yeah, I got to see this thing in my rear view mirror as we're driving to where we're filming this video. And it's like a whole new level of menacing. I used to think the wild track was kind of menacing. Obviously they knew what they were doing when they put those amber day daytime running lights on there versus like the white ones that every other Bronco gets. And I didn't, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this. I hopped out of the wild track into the Raptor and then back and forth. Yeah. I didn't know you can make the wild track feel small. Yep. This thing is a tank. Yeah, and that, that, that's absolutely one of the talking points that we'll get into. So we will start by going around the outside and just pointing out the differences. We'll look at the underside a little bit and point out some of the things that really stand out. There is a lot to unpack and we're not going to hit everything and we're not going to dig into like the tech specs or anything on this video. This is just more an observation and then an opinion at the end on is it really worth that? We already pointed out the daytime running lights and obviously you can see it from this view side by side, but let's just point out some other stuff on the front end that's really standing out to us on both the Wild Track as well as the Raptor. So obviously we have a completely different grill. Always thought the Wild Track with the gloss black grill looks good. It's not specific to the Wild Track, however, but what is specific is to the Raptor over here. And the, do not Ford, be the Ford inlaid, it's sort of F-150 derived grill. Absolutely. And don't be fooled by the clearance lights over here on the Wild Track. That was a sponsor that gave those to them. And we're, we're just trying them out to see if we actually like them or not. So you do have a lot of the same safety features on the Raptor and the Wild Track with the adaptive cruise and 360. You get the best of the best when it comes to like the tech that Ford offers. But we do have completely different bumpers. They are both steel. The modular bumper is more apparent over there on the Raptor where you can bolt some stuff to the outside. And obviously we have completely different tow hook capabilities where we kind of have a shackle style on the wild track and the fixed ones on the Raptor over there. You can also see that the fog lights are completely different on the Raptor. Wild track, we just have that singular LED fog light where we actually have some from Rigid on the Raptor. Uh, the inner ones come with a fun little cover from the factory that say Raptor on them, but you can easily just pop those off. Then all of a sudden you have four fog lights, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure if you look closely inside of that grill of that Raptor, you will see an inner cooler in there, uh, which I'm not seeing the same one. Maybe it is the same one. Obviously we're still dealing with turbo motors, but 
dramatically different powertrains. We'll talk a little more about that. The other thing I really want to point out is the bash plate differences. Yes, they're different colors. Uh, the big difference here is this specific wild track does not have bash plates all the way back. The Raptor is pretty covered up when it comes to a protection standpoint. And there's a lot of stuff underneath this thing that I want to point the differences out because that's the stuff that kind of intrigues me. We went ahead and turned all the fog lights on across the bunch here and all four of them here on the Raptor look very aggressive. Those inner ones are actually hooked up to the accessory switch so you can turn them on uh, without having all four of them on. You can just have the outer two on which is pretty dang cool. Moving up from there let's talk about the hood differences on Big these difference. two. The heat extraction and the bulge in the middle of the hood of the Raptor is insane. It looks so cool, especially from behind the driver's seat yeah. where you can see all these vents of heat extraction. Then we also have this stamped into the plastic Raptor logo, which looks very aggressive. Very easy to just distinguish it apart from just an overhead view simply by just the hood, which is kind of right, cool. Right. Here on the Wild Trek, we actually have the same hood across the entire Bronco lineup. However, on the Wild Trek, we get a cool graphic on the hood that's it's kind of like satin or matte black and it has the Wild Trek logo engraved on it. It does look really good but it doesn't do it justice compared to the Raptor's hood. It looks tough, just not as tough. And I totally agree with Austin behind the driver's seat, picking up the little fins and the dimension on that hood vent is pretty gnarly. Uh, let's not forget before we turn these things sideways. Uh, hang on, I gotta back up here a second. I'm sitting here with my hands on these and you're wondering like, do these heat extractors work? Because you'll see the ones on the side here in a minute, but yeah. There's like a complete difference. Like I could get some marshmallows going over here and have a little little fire and it's just kind of lame over here. But yeah, those, those vents work, they're functional. Going back to the, the mirrors that I wanted to talk about, you can see that not only on the Raptor do we have those clearance lights on the grill because the thing's so darn wide, but there's also the clearance lights that are orange from the front and then you also get a little treat from the back, which is a complete like, it's like look at me thing, but it's really cool. You get the red light on the back. Over here in Laneville, we don't have the daytime running lights on up front because I actually have the, uh, the perimeter lighting because the only thing the lights on the side are good for here on the wild track is for the perimeter lighting. So they're not turn signals, there's no fun party tricks. We just can find our like hot dog when it drops at the campsite and that's about all we get out of the wild track. Which you can do on the Raptor as well. Moving on to the sides of the Broncos here, there's a very tremendous difference is, uh, is. in a lot of different ways. Whether it's width, whether it's height, whether it's tire size, whether it's a ground clearance, whether it's the size of the side steps, there, you can tell them there's, apart. There's a lot going on. Let's talk through some of those. Obviously at the very front, you get the same profile at the, the side markers or the front amber lights, but it quickly changes as you come back. As I was speaking before, that heat extractor on the Raptor, where you have the exact same fender you're gonna find on every other Bronco on the Wild Track. Obviously, we have a slightly wider uh, fender flare on the Wild Track versus lower trim models, and then things again get stepped up another notch on the Raptor. And Austin mentioned tire sizes. We have a two inch tire size difference, 35 all the way up to 37 on the Raptor. And this is the one thing that really stands out to me. You're gonna block my next comment here, so get out of the way. Okay. Um, this is very similar to when we had the big bend up against the wild track. Like the big bend looks similar uh, to the wild track that the wild track looks to the Bronco. So the, the wild the track. The, yeah, thank you. So many names. It's getting confusing. There's so many words. Um, so yeah, the, the big bend sat about the same difference that the Raptor sitting from the wild track. And it's kind of fun to see that. Uh, the last comment I will make is the taillights. Obviously we have a completely different specific to the Raptor taillight. And the other thing that's fun is you pick up on, it's not only your brake light from a side profile, but you have that running light sticking with the threes. We have the threes that we'll look at a little more, uh, the, the three lights that is, we'll look at a little more on the backside here in just a second. When we do talk about the sides of the two of these compared to each other, overall likes, dislikes, one of the things that since the Raptor came out that I haven't really been able to get over is the Raptor is not cheap. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's a $100,000 Ford Bronco. I can't get over just how cheap the fenders look. They're, they're <laughs> like, like here on the Bronco uh, Wild yeah. Trek, they're, they're like textured. They kind of have a matte look to them. But on the Raptor, they're like gloss plastic. 
Yeah. Like, like they're not gloss black, they're not gloss painted, they're gloss plastic. On a $100,000 vehicle, you have one foot of fender that is gloss plastic. I just, I, I wish they would have painted them or done something a little more special. I get it that it has to be rugged, I get it has to be ready or easily, easily replaceable and not super expensive, but still, I mean, it would have been cool to have a little bit more color there. Definitely a good point, Austin. And the final point we'll make with the side profile here is that height difference. What does it mean for actual daily driving, right? So I'm six feet tall, I have longer legs. Uh, so you can see in the wild track on those 35 inch tires, I can still put my butt cheek on the seat and fully touch the ground. So technically I don't have to use the running board to get in and out of the wild track. Things get a little different here when things you go up by two inches. So. I actually have to use the running board, but just to show you that difference of sitting in the seat, like that looks like a lot more than two inches to me or three inches to me, like it's substantial. So there is that substantial difference of getting in and out where you actually feel the need to use that running board. Take it in mind if you're just like, oh. I, uh, I actually fell out of the Raptor when I first got out of it. I was trying, you know, being all cool, getting out of this $100,000 Bronco and I about fell on my Whoops. face because I wasn't ready for how much higher it was than the Wild Trek, so. All right, let's get onto the back. Let's do it. And from the back, it's <laughs> it's insane. It really is just insane I mean, that something as big as the Wild Trek can be so unbelievably outdone and still be road legal. Right. It's crazy to me. I mean, from, cool. from a distance, seeing the whole diff back there, the whole axle, seeing how high up it is off the ground. I mean, you would think this thing's heavily modified, but it's it's a well, factory vehicle. It is just modified heavily from the factory. Yeah, it's and crazy. these are the fun things to see, again, once we get to the underside and start pointing some of these obvious differences out if you take the time to look at them. But let's just go through what is different. Austin already hit on the, the differential cover that is completely different. And one thing that we need to point out is the exhaust. We're gonna let you listen to that in just a second here, but you have dual tail pipes that come out of the driver's side over there on the Raptor, and that is an active exhaust that you can go through the different modes, which will change. I'm assuming there's some valves on there. I didn't see them at the back, but I'm definitely assuming there's some valves on there versus the puny little wild track over here. When we talk about those performance numbers, it's about a second different from zero to 60, if that puts things into perspective. 37 inch tires, 35 inch tires. This Raptor can do zero to 60 and about just under five and a half seconds, putting the wild track at about six and a half seconds. Getting back to the back here, tow hooks. I'm missing a tow hook. I only have one tow ring on the back. Raptor, like every capable off-road vehicle should have one on each side. Obviously, we have the tail lights, which we already hit on, specific to the Raptor. We have that third brake light. The other thing that you guys are looking at right now is that like accessory tray that's on that back door. Whether that is specific for accessories or if that adds some rigidity to the door like Wranglers do when you put a bigger tire on there, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm making an assumption on that. But anyways, the coolest, biggest thing looking at these things from the rear is just that width difference. side is where the party takes place and this is just a very small window to everything that is different but when we start to look at like the trailing arms on the rear end where the wild track is just this tubular design kind of standard and then you go over to the raptor and it's completely different like it looks off-road ready it looks off-road capable it's really cool here's that exhaust difference we were touching on a little bit ago as well as that differential cover difference that little r in the corner of the differential cover make sure you take note of that little easter egg that ford threw on there and then you come over to the side and you take a little peek around you notice the lack of the bash plates on the wild track compared to the raptor that is an option that you can get on the wild track so that's not necessarily a huge deal but it does appear to be some additional bracing across kind of the transmission tunnel um, on the Raptor compared to the Wild Track. And then the real thing that is cool to me is that front suspension. I thought that Haas 3.0 suspension that came on the Wild Track was pretty darn gnarly, and it is. Let's not dismiss that. 
but I believe it is the Haas 4.0 that they call it that is in the Raptor. And everything is just so dramatically different. The, the A arms on the bottom, the control arms, completely different design, completely different size. The actual size of the components is just a massive difference. And this is not only in the front, this is also in the back. You can totally see that function difference between the two. One thing to note on the Raptor here is we can simply just walk up to it and close the hood. That's because it has struts that hold the hood up. We're on this $64,000 wild track. We actually have to get the rod in place just the same as a $30,000 Bronco. Getting into the Raptor, the first thing that you notice hopping in, one, the height difference, two, the way that the screen greets you. We have an entirely digital dash here in the Raptor, which is super, super cool. The way that this thing functions entirely and the graphics that it brings just makes it feel that much more cool, more elegant, more sporty. I just love the digital dash and I really hope that for 2024 or 2025, that they throw that in the other other Bronco models because I think there's a lot of people that would highly desire to have this dash. Not to mention that we can get it across a lot of other vehicles. Like the Escape now has a digital dash. You can get a digital dash in the F-150. So why can we not get a digital dash in a Wild Trek Bronco? You know, I, I don't really fully understand that. Um, I get the exclusive. Uh, exclusivity of it being just for the Raptor, but it would be cool to get that in the other vehicles as well. The other thing you notice getting in here right away is the seats in the steering wheel. The seats, we have these Alcantara with leather bucket seats that hold you quite tight. They're very good feeling. Then we have this really chunky steering wheel with Raptor engraved on the bottom with the same paddle shifters that you'd find on something like the 4GT, these aluminum breathable paddle shifters, which feel absolutely phenomenal. Just being behind the wheel, this thing you immediately notice that hood and the substantial height difference between the Wild Trek. Another thing that we get in the Raptor is a whole lot more buttons up on our dash here with the sway bar disconnect with a locking front and rear diff. And then not only that, but we have a lot of really cool like red accents in here. We got the red start stop button, the red ring around the goat mode, the Raptor engraved uh, glove box cover or center console cover here. Uh, and then the red Bronco on the dash, red on the vents. There's just a lot of different accents in here, but the main differences that you're going to notice hopping from the wild track into here is what I brought up earlier, the seats, the steering wheel. Other than that, it's all very similar. One thing I do really like about driving the Raptor right off the bat over the wild track is these paddle shifters and this transmission. I mean, one, Two, the downshifts, the upshifts are spot on, super lightning fast. Not only that, but that exhaust sound with the additional power makes this thing an entirely different driving experience over the Wild Trek. The Wild Trek has enough power to get you by and it can be fun at times. The Raptor is a whole nother story. It has way more power, way more torque. It is dramatically more fun to drive. Here. And it goes over bumps like they're not even there. It is tremendous how dramatic the Wild Track is compared to the Raptor. I mean, this thing is an absolute tank. Driving the Wild Track, there is definitely a difference after being in the Raptor. This is a great car. I don't want to dismiss it, but we're comparing it to a car that is $30,000 more, and there is a $30,000 difference. The thing that sticks out to me is the seats. Obviously, they look different. There's a lot different bolstering but the way I can describe that from a driving standpoint is I feel like I'm driving on the wild track where I feel like I'm driving in the Raptor. Those seats suck you in. It feels like you're in a different spot. They feel really good too by the way but the wild track's fine. I don't want to take away from that at all. Uh, obviously those seats are different not only the sitting but they're also different in the back with the storage. You get a little more storage on the Raptor than the wild track. Everything is spiced up a little bit uh, on the Wild Track with the stitching or with on the Raptor. We have the stitching on the dashboard of the Raptor and just good old plastic, different color on the Wild Track, similar to other trims. We have that same 12 plus inch uh, that comes with the Lux Pack. Uh, infotainment that is amazing awesome on both vehicles and you get the Debbie Downer when you start talking about the actual instrument cluster a lot less buttons a lot less options uh, but still a lot of fun to drive let's go ahead and just wrap up today's video comparing the wild trek to the raptor is it worth the thirty thousand dollar thirty thousand dollar price gap between the two of them and i'm going to say it is but it's it is. not 
in this climate. I personally wouldn't buy one where we live um, just because I can't use a quarter of the capability right. of this vehicle here. I can't use a quarter of this vehicle's capability within 100 miles of here. Right. Uh, but if you live down in the desert, I mean, in the mountains, the, desert, in the mountains yeah. this thing would be an absolute riot. There is nothing about this Bronco Raptor that compares to the Wild Trek. Yeah. I mean, they literally changed almost everything to make this vehicle. I, I get it's $30,000, but there's honestly $30,000 of added components to the thing. Right. It, it's truly tremendous. And, and the power difference, the transmission difference, the ride difference, it's its insane. It yeah. is like the Big Ben to the Wild Trek. It's, it's, it's bravo to the Ford engineers for making that dramatic $30,000 price difference from the base Bronco to the uh, wild track and then uh, again doing it and making sense of it yeah. and being able to prove the value from the $60,000 wild track to that up to $100,000 Raptor. I honestly always thought walking by him, there's no way I'd ever spend hundred grand on a Bronco Raptor. Yeah, no way. Taking thought, the time to I, look at it and understand it changes your mind. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And that was the same way we felt looking at the wild track to the Big Ben. Right. So it's really, really cool. I 100% think that it's a totally different vehicle than the wild track thank you guys so much for tuning in hope you guys enjoyed this brief overview checking out the two of these if you guys are interested in bronco content we got a whole bunch of it in this bronco playlist that we have up in the corner so we look forward to seeing you guys there and uh comment See you next down time. below if you guys have any questions or anything see you guys next time